Hello and welcome to this video on fugacity. At the end of this video you will be able to define fugacity and explain why it is useful and define the fugacity coefficient and explain its expected values at low, moderate and high pressure. Now in our previous video where we left off was looking at the criteria for phase equilibria and what we were left with once we looked started with our absolute Gibbs free energy we separated the components into ideal and departure Gibbs free energy and what we were left with was that actually we can just say if the departure Gibbs free energy of my liquid phase and my gas phase so gas phase liquid phase are equal then I can say that the Gibbs free energy of the two phases are equal and I have phase equilibrium. Now an issue with that is even though I can of course define what the Gibbs departure is, it's not actually clear uh, or it's not very intuitive how big or what the magnitude of that departure function should be. Should the departure function have a value of 1, 1000, a million um, so so exactly what should it be now the person who uh, actually came up with a really good idea for this was GN Lewis who you'll know from Lewis acids and and many many other great discoveries and uh, and ideas in chemistry so the guy was truly a genius and so what his idea was that instead of just using the Gibbs free energy departure function what he would do is define something called fugacity and fugacity is defined in this equation here and so so what it is is it's the pressure times by the exponential of the Gibbs free energy departure function okay so that's just that term on top there divided by RT. Now why this is useful isn't necessarily immediately apparent but you can sort of get a bit of a clue as to how it's useful if we consider just for a moment the difference in Gibbs free energy for an ideal gas. So if we've got an ideal gas and at two different pressures P2 and P1 the difference in Gibbs free energy between those two states is simply RT on LNP. Now if instead we've got a real gas then we can calculate the difference in Gibbs free energy between P2 and P1 as RT the log of fugacity of state 2 divided by the fugacity of state 1. So this is really, really useful and we'll use this a lot in phase equilibrium and also in reaction equilibria later on. But what this shows you or partly shows you is that the, the fugacity can be considered something of a corrected pressure. So it has the same units as pressure. So, so fugacity will be in uh, pascals or kilopascals or, or something like that and in the ideal gas limit then we know that or that the fugacity has to be equal to pressure okay so so it's a really nice model from that point of view that that we know what it should equal to at some limit then for a real fluid of course the fugacity doesn't equal pressure and so what we can introduce is we can introduce something called the fugacity coefficient. And this is something that is just a nice compact way of saying, well, what's the deviation between real gas behavior and ideal gas behavior according to the fugacity? And so, of course, we can rearrange the equation that we defined before for the relationship between fugacity and pressure to get an expression for the fugacity coefficient. 
Now, if we're wanting to calculate the fugacity using an equation of state, then the approach we're going to use is to calculate the fugacity coefficient. And so if we go back to our fundamental equation for Gibbs free energy, then we know that the a change in Gibbs free energy is given by a change in pressure and also a, a change in temperature. Now, if we're interested in constant temperature, as we are here, so the change between one state and another, but at constant temperature, then our change in Gibbs free energy is simply given by V to P. And so if we look at the difference in Gibbs free energy between one state and another here, then what we get is that it's simply the integral of V to P. And so this here is for a real gas. We can also do the same calculation for an ideal gas. Okay, so that's this equation here where we've simply substituted in the, the molar volume for an ideal gas is equal to RT on P. And then if we take these two equations away from each other, then what we get is this equation here. And so if we then take the limit of this and we say that pressure one is equal to zero, okay, and so if it's equal to zero, then or very, very close to zero, then of course the Gibbs free energy there has to be ideal. And so if we do that then, then what we're left with in that equation is that the, what we're left with in that equation, sorry, I'll just clean this up a little bit, is that the real Gibbs free energy minus the ideal Gibbs free energy, i.e. the departure Gibbs free energy, is equal to this integral here. Okay, so, so if we have an equation of state, then we can use this uh, this integration here. And so, but of course, we'll remember, so, and just cleaning this up a little bit, take the log of both sides, then what I get is that the log of my fugacity coefficient is given by 1 on RT times by the integration from the previous slide. Now, to use this equation, because I've got V here, that means I need an equation of state that's in the form V equals something, 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 something. Okay, some function of temperature and pressure. Now, as we know, not all, or in fact, not very many equations of state are not in that form. So we can do some, some mathematical transformations, and I'm not going to really spend much time on that. But what we can get is the equation down the bottom here for the fugacity coefficient where we're looking at an integration between infinite volume, okay, where it's an ideal gas, to the actual volume that we're interested in. And what's in our integration is an equation for pressure. And then over here, we've got the, the log of Z and then uh, Z as well. Okay, so, so those are just numbers. Once we know the volume, we can calculate what Z is. And so, so this one here is just our equation of state, pressure equals something, 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 some function of temperature and volume. Now, that's how to calculate it, but it's always good to, uh, to have some idea of what we expect to get for that fugacity coefficient. And so what we have here is a typical fugacity coefficient plot. So on the left here, on the y-axis, we've got fugacity coefficient. On the x-axis, we've got reduced pressure. And we've got a value of 1 here. And we see that the vast majority of data has a fugacity coefficient smaller than 1. It's only up here where we have high temperature and high pressure as well, that we start to get fugacity coefficients greater than one. So this is quite similar to something like the compressibility or uh, the 
H departure function, which we expect to have certain values at moderate pressures. Okay, so in this this big region here. So certainly at the most common pressures we expect, we expect the fugacity coefficient to be smaller than one. So to recap what we've covered in this lecture, the fugacity was defined to replace the use of the Gibbs departure function in phase equilibria calculations. It's very useful for that. It is a corrected pressure with the same units as pressure. Fugacity is equal to pressure for an ideal gas, but for most real gases, fugacity will be smaller than pressure. And this is only, you only move away from that at very high pressures and temperatures. Okay, thanks a lot for your time.